I sort of literally woke up in, in the middle of the night and I thought, I have to do this. I have to try and relaunch the brand and, and I have to dive headfirst into it. Hector Powell starts with my great-great-grandfather, Wilton Powell. He actually taught his eldest son, Hector Powell, the actual the art of London tailoring as it was then. So Hector thought the natural thing to do was when he was 18 was to set up his own tailoring firm in the City of London and that was called Hector Powell. And then the next real disruptor was war, it was the Second World War. So at that stage they began making tailored uniforms for the wealthier officers and that's really a time when they went from being icons in fashion to icons in British history and as soon as that happened it sort of skyrocketed them into into nationwide and then eventually global acclaim and then went into a merger with Burberry so it came under ownership of the Burberry family and at that stage it was really a sub-label of Burberry and that continued right the way through to the 90s or that the brand was dropped from, from the Burberry label. I, I was never someone who excelled creatively. The thing that I excelled at at school was politics and then later working a bit in party politics and then for a political consultancy for, for three years. And it was only at the end of that period that I started to kind of accept this sort of kind of a burning passion for fashion that until then I'd, I'd ignored. So I decided to, to try and relaunch Hector Powell over what I was doing, my, my current career as it was in politics. It, it sort of, it, it genuinely sort of came to me in, in the middle of the night. I sort of woke up bolt upright, but at the time I knew instinctively that, that I wasn't enjoying what I was doing, but never thinking about being able to have ownership of it myself. And I sort of literally woke up in, in the middle of the night and I thought, I have to do this. I have to try and relaunch the brand and, and I have to dive headfirst into it and get as far away from politics as I can. That sort of moment from then, it, it's been really clear in my mind. And, you know, I've had lots of ups and, and lots of downs, but that clarity I had that night has sort of remained through it all. The path to being full-time running the brand from, from leaving my job in politics wasn't without its challenges. So I felt that in order to sort of take the income cut from my job in London, I had to move back in with my parents in the countryside. And it was literally a case of just trying to get cash so that I could put it into the business to actually relaunch it and, and fund the first, the first collection. The business is completely self-funded. I haven't had any investment. I'm, I'm the sole owner and that's come from sort of doing hard graft, be it gardening, which uh, is a laughable idea to the people who know me. I was also uh, a postman, and, and I think, yeah, it was, it was a difficult time when a lot of my um, friends were working sort of successful corporate and professional roles in, in the city, um, and I was in, in, in the countryside as a part-time postman and putting everything I earned um, into, into the business just to try and get enough cash to be able to get myself to a point where I could actually invest in the first stock.